Okay, it is, uh, this video should be being viewed on Thursday, December 13th on uh, Hanukkah. And this is uh, going over Sugya sheet number 26. We should have spent the week going through these, uh, these various sources and asking the questions. And you should have spent a day or two already uh, thinking about the questions. But uh, what I'd like to do is quickly review the sources and, uh, and ask the questions. And then I'd like you to send me the main questions uh, on, from these sheets. I apologize if I'm looking off camera because I have my sheets here in front of me. And uh, so I'll be looking at them and then looking back at you. But really what I'd like you to do is take notes. You should basically have most of these translations down pat. Um, and, uh, and the questions are ready. You should have been working on them the whole week. So there shouldn't be anything new. This, this year, this video should really be a, a simple review. Uh, I miss you guys, and uh, let's see here. So the first sources that we saw were from the Rambam on Hechos Hanukkah, and the Rambam had, had equated those that are obligated to hear the Megillah on Purim with the obligation to light the candles on Hanukkah. So anyone that's obligated to hear the Megillah on Purim, so they are obligated to light the candles on Hanukkah. Then we saw from, uh, from Megillah that uh, we saw as follows that Anyone that Kriyas Megillah is a mitzvah midivrei sofrim, right? And uh, and men and women and uh, and converts and and slaves, uh, freed slaves, they're all obligated to uh, to read Megillah, right? So all those people would also be obligated to to light the menorah. Then we saw the Rambam says as follows that that a, 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 a ner Hanukkah that was lit by somebody that was deaf or dumb or uh, or a minor. Right, somebody that was under bar about mitzvah age, um, or a gentile, so they haven't done anything. It doesn't. It doesn't count as a halakas neiros Hanukkah. And obviously, they've lit a candle. You see a lit candle, but that doesn't count as a uh, as a halakas neiros Hanukkah. Um, right. So, uh, right. So there, we also talked about somebody that lights inside, and then they bring the the menorah outside. So that also doesn't count for anything. Right. So uh, okay, and we were curious. We had a couple of questions. What we wanted to know is. And this is one of the questions that I'd like you to send me. The questions, not, not the answers. The, the answers we're going to get to in a minute. Hopefully you have some of your own answers, and hopefully you've been developing them. And I'm, I'm sure they were great, great answers. Um, but the, uh, the question was, why is it that, a, uh, that a, a somebody that was deaf, dumb, a minor, a Gentile, so why when they light, why, why haven't they accomplished anything? In other words, it's a, it's a lit candle. So if it's a lit candle, they've lit the candle. So the, the point is to have a lit candle. So why is it that they that they don't have a they don't have a lit candle? Right? Why is their candle not considered a lighting? It's a lighting. You light the candle. It's very simple. It doesn't make a difference if you can't hear. It doesn't make a difference if you can't talk. It doesn't make a difference how old you are. It doesn't make a difference what religion you are. If the point is to light a candle, so you've lit a candle. That's that's a halakas neiros on Hanukkah. Okay. Our next question was. Uh, was why doesn't the Rambam list this halacha of who, who's excluded from lighting? Why doesn't he light, list that when he talks about who is obligated? Because he said whoever's obligated to light when it comes to Megillah, so that they're obligated to light with on Hanukkah. So why not list that question? Right? Why not list this halacha of Chera Shota Vakatan and Goy? So why not list them? In the first halacha, when he talked about who is obligated, why does he say who, whoever like, lights, if these people light, they're not, they're not, uh, it doesn't count, why not list that in the first halacha? Okay, that was, uh, that was our question. Okay, then, uh, okay, the Rambam says that the reason why a deaf, dumb, minor, or Gentile that lights a menorah hasn't accomplished anything is why it isn't a, why it's not considered a, an, actual, uh, an actual lighting is because they're not obligated in the mitzvah. Okay, fine. So that makes sense to us. That's, uh, that gives us a little information. So why is it that just because they aren't obligated in the midst of lighting menorah that they haven't accomplished anything when they do light? As they, again, our question is the same again that we're repeating is it doesn't seem to make any sense. In other words, if they've, if they've lit a candle and the point is to light a candle, so they lit a candle. It doesn't make a difference who they are. Just because they're not obligated in the mitzvah, why is it that they, uh, why is it that they can't they can't, uh, their lighting doesn't count. Okay. Then we saw the Gemara, it talks about, uh, says that, says, it gives this principle that, that anybody, this is the, this is source number three, the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, that says that anybody that's not obligated in a mitzvah can't accomplish the mitzvah. 
So we want to know what the logic is behind that. And is what's the svar? Just because somebody's not obligated means they can't accomplish, they can't be motzi you, they can't, they can't fulfill the mitzvah for you. Uh, why is that? Why is it that just because they're not obligated, they can't fulfill the uh, the mitzvah for you? I don't, uh, that that confused us a lot. So then we saw a Gemara in Shabbos that uh, that talks about Hanukkah, right? So and it says as follows: It says that uh, that let's say you had a candle burning all Shabbos long, and now it's multi Shabbos and it's the next night of Hanukkah. So now it's 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 after Shabbos, it's Saturday night, and you want to so now you have the mitzvah of Hanukkah. So just the, the candles already there. You don't have to do anything, right? You're supposed to have candles on Hanukkah. So you had uh, you had Shabbos candles. They lit, you know, instead of lighting Shabbos candles that last an hour or two hours, you lit a shiva candle, let's say, and that uh, that shiva candle lasted you now and for for days. So don't keep lighting. So the Gemara had said, right? The point of this Gemara, we went through it in Shear. I'm sure we're going to go through it in Shear. Have gone through it in Shear, but we we said that the uh, the idea is. That um, that you have to you have to light. You know, the mitzvah is lighting, right? It's not hanacha. It's it's not the placing of the the menorah, but the mitzvah is that you actually have to light a candle, right? That's the point of Hanukkah, because you have to light the candle. Okay, so it's not enough just to have a pre lit candle. You got to light. So you'd have to you have to blow that candle out and relight. Okay. Now the Gemara, this Gemara also. Had said right. This Gemara had said that uh, when it says who can't light, it leaves off the uh, the Gentile. All right, it leaves off the Gentile. Uh, according to the Gemara, you would think that a Gentile could, right? This Gemara and Shabbos at least. So why why we leave off the the Gentile? Okay, and uh, why is the Rabbim included? And uh, okay, so now and now our question is why would you think that a uh, somebody that's deaf or dumb or a minor, why could they light for somebody else? Right? Why would you think they could? You know, if we specify that they can't, right? We never write any. We don't. We, the all laws are written because you might think that that the law doesn't apply. So here, the law the law is written because you think that it doesn't. What's going on here, right? So uh, so why why do we specify that they're not able to light? Okay, and the answer is because you might think they would be, but why would you think they would be? Okay. And then we saw we saw two halachos that are important for us. We saw that uh, that everybody is obligated in shofar, right? But we saw that uh, that that women and and slaves and minors were were exempt, right? And uh, then we saw a halacha that says that everybody is everybody can be a shliach. I can appoint anybody as a messenger. Right for uh, I can appoint anybody as a messenger for myself if I want to appoint somebody a messenger to do a mitzvah for me, except for hour three, which is the the cherish and the shota and the katan. Right, we said that they can't because they're not bnei das. They don't have das. They don't have uh, they don't have the, the the full mental functioning of a uh, of of a you know the average adult. That uh, so th- those three don't have it, and therefore they can't act as a shliach. They can't act as a messenger. And but a Gentile, right, and this is key, a Gentile can't act not because we don't believe they have das. A Gentile adult has just as much, and most you know, chances are more das, more uh, more mental capability than I do. So why can't they? Because they're not part of the covenant. What excludes them from the ability to be a shliach to fulfill a mitzvah, to be a messenger to fulfill a mitzvah, is because they're not part of the covenant. So those are the sources that we saw, and with those sources, we had hoped and to answer our questions. So what I'd like you to do now is email me these three questions, which in the next video, we're going to attempt uh, to do our best to answer. The three questions are as follows, and I'd like you right now to, to, to email them or text them to me, is uh, why can't a deaf, dumb, and minor lie for somebody else? Right? And, uh, right? and uh, to further that question is, just because they're not Ben Briss, sorry, excuse me, just because they're not, uh, they're, they're not able to be multi somebody else, why can't they fulfill the mitzvah? Right, and then we said just because they're not chayiv, they're not obligated. Right, then we wanted to know why is it that a gentile can't can't light for somebody else? Right, and then thirdly, why would you think that these four, the chayr, shot of katan, and the guy could light for somebody else? So I'd like you to send me those questions, and uh, the next video that we're going to watch, we're going to answer these questions. Okay, happy Hanukkah, guys. I miss you.